There's a really important detail here that you probably missed about this controversial inning at UFC 295. We're gonna talk about the truth about whether or not this was an early stoppage, plus some really interesting anatomy regarding Perea's leg kicks. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter, and my goal in this channel is to help teach you about the medical side of the sports world. So if anatomy and that sort of thing interests you in the sports sense, then please consider subscribing to help support the channel. What we see happen right here with Yuri's hands tells us everything we need to know about the truth of whether or not this should be considered an early stoppage. We'll get to that in a minute. The unique anatomy lesson here in this fight lies in Perea's calf kick, specifically these low, outside calf kicks. We all saw in round one how much he was beating up on Prohaska's left lead leg here, and all of those kicks were landing square on this lateral portion of Prohaska's left leg. We could see the bruising that developed there, the swelling, and so I wanna talk about what impact this is gonna have. There's a couple of key muscles, a couple of key nerves that all influence how much weight and stability you're gonna have on your lead leg, as a result of exactly where these calf kicks are landing. Now, this is probably affecting more muscle because it's heading more in the mid portion of the lower leg as opposed to higher up in the knee where that nerve is gonna be wrapping around. So sometimes with these calf kicks, we see an injury or sort of a stunning to the nerve. In this case with Perea, I think this was more the muscle and just even potentially an injury to the fibula bone on the outside of Prohaska's leg. Looking at our biodigital anatomy tool here, I've shown the outside of the legs and these key muscles. The lateral compartment contains two muscles, the perineus longus and the perineus brevis. They sit just on the outside portion of the fibula, which is considered the non-weight-bearing thin bone on the outside of our leg. Those muscles that are getting beat, that are getting kicked right in this area by Perea are going to do a couple things. Number one, they're going to evert the foot, so they're going to bring the foot outward, and then they're also gonna have a little bit of roll with some plantar flexion. So whenever you injure these muscles and cause a lot of bruising in these muscles, it becomes really hard to control the stability of your foot as you're trying to plant and help support your ankle ligaments. The nerve that sits right up in that area is called the perineal nerve. If we look at the backside of the thigh, the sciatic nerve is gonna be the big nerve that comes down behind the hamstrings. The sciatic nerve here then splits off. The common perineal nerve is going to wrap around the outside portion of the leg, just around the head of the fibula. And then in the other division, it's gonna be the tibial nerve going down the backside of the calf. That perineal nerve controls the muscles that help to lift our ankle up and pick up our toes. So if there's ever a shot that comes up higher up here near the head of the fibula, you can stun or temporarily injure that perineal nerve, leading to what we see with a foot drop where fighters can't pick up their toes. We'll address the impact of that muscle damage and injury, and then finally talk about the truth about this question of an early stoppage. But first, I wanna give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Delete Me. Right at this moment, there are corporations scouring the web looking for your personal information to package and sell off to the highest bidder. Sounds pretty concerning, right? Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal information being circulated online. This might be social security numbers, birthdays, previous addresses, and even information on your loved ones. Delete Me's mission is simple. Remove your information from search results and help give you the right to own, manage, and remove your own data. Right now, if you head to joindeleteme.com slash brianmd20 and use promo code Brian and MD20, you're gonna get 20% off all consumer plans. It's extremely simple. Just submit the information you want removed on their dashboard. Then Delete Me's team of experts work to find and remove your personal data, and in seven days, you get a very detailed, transparent report about what exactly they did. And then Delete Me keeps working, rechecking, and continuing to remove your information every three months. I love how in a dynamic internet world, Delete Me is constantly working to stay on top of removing that information. It's been pretty shocking to see everything that's out there that they can find and remove for you. And so I really have enjoyed the service, and I think you will too. So head to the link in the description code BrianMD20 to get 20% off their consumer plans. Thank you again to Delete Me for sponsoring this video and let's get back to our learning. The implication of these low calf kicks is going to be primarily that as Yuri is trying to stand and plant on that lead leg, all of those muscles are trying to fire primarily in an isometric fashion where they're not necessarily picking up or dorsiflexing his ankle, but as he's standing, as he's trying to move forward, those muscles are trying to fire and whenever there's a lot of bruising from the continued trauma, it becomes really hard to fire those muscles because pain basically shuts them off. In fact, here in this sequence, we can see as Yuri steps forward with that left leg, you can actually see the outline of some of those tendons, the anterior tibialis tendon right there in the front of the ankle that are working to control the descent of the ankle and foot as he steps on the canvas. There could be a little bit of foot drop there with injury to that nerve, but that tendon, that outline that we see is going to be one of the key muscles that can be injured whenever you have damage to that perineal nerve from these low calf kicks. So as Yuri's trying to step forward, if that nerve isn't working as well, if the muscles aren't working as well, 
his foot is gonna slap down harder, he's not gonna have as much stability, and he's not gonna to wanna to spend as much time on that lead leg. So very expert, great technique from Perea to cause some of that initial damage. Now, the reason you probably clicked my thoughts on this early stoppage. I'll admit when I first watched it in real time and the first couple of times through the replay, I thought it looked early. I thought it seemed like an early stoppage to be completely honest. Backing this up though, I disagree. I think it was a legitimate stoppage because of what we saw with Yuri's hands. Of course, number one, when there's a question of was this a legitimate stoppage, I always think was there a very obvious, clear mechanism, a clear punch, something that could have affected him and caused him to get knocked out. Here in this case, yes, we saw Perea drop Prohaska with that initial punch. First, we saw some of these elbows come in, and then just as it looked like Yuri was trying to stand up, we see more contact directly with the fist right here from Perea onto Prohaska. The reason initially that I thought this was an early stoppage is because we see Yuri making this effort. We see him trying to push up. He's trying to stand. He's bringing his right leg up into a position to try and protect himself, to try and get up, to try and continue fighting. And so it looked like he was still trying to be very active and just potentially slipped and fell backwards. After he's first dropped, we see him try and get back up to his feet. He's firing those muscles in the right arm. He's trying to wrap up Perea. He's pushing Perea backwards up against the cage. We even see Yuri, especially this right knee comes out. He's clearly present. He's trying to continue to protect himself. And when it comes to this question of should a fighter be allowed to continue when they still might be dazed or hurt, as DC likes to say, to me it comes down, are they still trying to protect themselves and are they doing it in a clear way? Now here, of course, we see Goddard's got a great view of this. He's watching to see what's going on. This is about the time where Perea is starting to deliver more of these fists. And eventually we see Yuri fall backwards. The key transition, the key change though happens, I want you to focus on Prohaska's hands. Here it looks like his hands are still active, he's still trying to grip, he's flexing his bicep, trying to hold on to Perea's thigh, but then all of a sudden we're gonna see his hands go limp. And his hands go limp right around the time when Perea delivers one of those shots. So right there, look at his hands. His hands are basically just hanging, they're dropping forward, the wrists are not firing, the wrists are not in a stable position, and this corresponds pretty much directly with when Perea delivers one of those shots. So here, Yuri seems to be engaged. The wrists are in more of a, a neutral kind of gripped position. But then as those blows continue, we see that Yuri's hands are eventually gonna go completely limp here in this position. And that's right as he starts to fall backwards. So to me, it makes perfect sense that one of those blows from Perea caused him to become more stunned, more dazed, more concussed because of how we saw those hands go limp. When those hands go limp, you're not doing anything to actively protect yourself. And so to me, that signifies that this was a valid, okay, fair stoppage. Now, yes, Yuri seemed to recover quickly, but when you've had one clear knockdown that seemed to initially affect him, and then you see those hands go limp, that's enough to me to suggest that he's compromised, he's not gonna defend himself adequately, and the fight needs to be stopped. Those details might not seem like much, but when you think about what's happening with our neurologic system, whenever you're active, your muscles are firing, but when you get knocked out, everything initially usually kind of has that limp feeling to it. It's not gonna be a natural thing for a fighter like Yuri to just have his arms out with his hands limp. They're gonna be flexed, they're gonna be rigid and locked, trying to advance, trying to protect himself. And so as we see those hits come down, the hands start to drop, the hands go limp, right as he falls back to me, making it clear that I think this was overall a good stoppage. Let me know your comments and thoughts down below, your questions on this little anatomy lesson with our leg kicks. Thank you as always for watching, and until next time, we'll see you later.